Okay, everybody, lie down on the floor and keep calm. Hello, and welcome to Drop By on Supernova Productions. Hi, I am Supernova78, and uh, I'm gonna take you today to a journey into space. And we're gonna do that with uh, Kerbal Space Program. It's a, it's a nice uh, space flight simulation program uh, with a funny touch. I'm uh, going to introduce you uh, to uh, Jabadai, Bill Bob and uh, Valentine Kerman and to the planet uh, Kerbal that we are uh, going to try to escape with uh, with a rocket to land on their uh, on their moon that uh, is named the moon and we're gonna do this on uh, this episode so about Kerbal yes I uh, get uh, get to know it uh, for the first time about two years ago yeah, practiced uh, a little bit uh, in the free time, but in the spare free time I had, I was very um, busy finishing the Judgment Day project for uh, the Planet Coaster uh, creations part of this channel. So in this episode, we are going to try to lay a base uh, on the moon of Kerbal, try to make there a permanent settlement. We're gonna drop two astronauts there, a scientist and an engineer and the pilot will return uh, safely to Kerbal as planned. But we're going nowhere without a rocket, so let we start building a rocket that's capable to do that. Well, let's get started. We take an Apollo-style capsule and a heat shield, half size of a liquid oxygen tank and right under there the engine, and a decoupler ring makes of uh, here the first uh, the top stage of the rocket. Then we have the crew cabin, two half size liquid oxygen tanks under it, another engine and the landing gears and that makes us a nice moon lander and part of the moon station uh, we are going to build there. Another discoupler uh, under it, I'm gonna open the cargo uh, bay of the crew cabin. Placing some antenna on uh, the cabin an XL parachute to make it safe back to Kerbin and because of the weight I will remove one half size liquid oxygen tank from the moon lander adding then two full size liquid oxygen tanks and engine under it to complete the booster and go on with some side decouplers for the boosters so uh, eventually I took uh, two uh, side boosters to uh, get this uh, rocket from the ground but uh, after testing that was uh, <laughs> not uh, not enough to uh, to get it uh, even hovering so uh, later we we're gonna replace those and we're gonna try a refiguration but uh, that will uh, show soon enough we uh, add some st the uh, stability fins uh, on the bottom of the rocket and uh, then we uh, can uh, look what we uh, take with us in, uh, in the cargo box that's uh, available in, uh, in the crew cabin uh, of the lander and we're gonna fill that with uh, some experiments and uh, some batteries and then we can close the doors and everything is available there and safely behind closed doors Let's see, uh, we put some thermometer in there and uh, I think some mystery crew container could fit in there as well. And then it's time to uh, power up our uh, lander, the part that stays behind as a, as a moon base. So uh, we're gonna add some batteries and uh, solar panels. So here I'm uh, placing a four uh, configuration uh, battery pack uh, on all sides of the rocket and let's see if we can put some solar panels in between or maybe up there is better, yes, no doors, uh, cargo doors are still reaching, so 
it, so let's do it like that. And now I'm going to finish off uh, the boat landers. Uh, I'm gonna put some uh, light, uh, some landing lights on them, uh, some more details, some uh, nice landing gear. Uh, boat uh, land, boat are functioning as landers. And, uh, well, at this particular stage, uh, the the crew cabin, the capsule doesn't need to land on uh, the moon. But the lander beneath it uh, will definitely land on the moon, but for further uh, missions to replace uh, astronauts and send them back and replace them by fresh uh, new Kerbins. Uh, we're definitely gonna land both uh, stages on, uh, on the moon in the future. Oh, uh, yeah, don't forget about that. Uh, I uh, just uh, saw I missed uh, a decoupler uh, between the capsule and the uh, uh, the heat shield and the rocket, uh, there needs to be a discoupler, otherwise uh, we are uh, bounding for disaster when uh, Jebediah needs to return to curb. Just uh, adding the batteries, some solar panels, so uh, they have uh, power enough to uh, come home. This is the return vehicle. I have to uh, give the lander an antenna, because it would be uh, nice if they can call, uh, call home when they landed safely. For the main rocket, uh, that's about it. We are uh, gonna make the three uh, solid booster configuration now with uh, the de side decouplers and uh, yeah, make the nice uh, aerodynamic nose cone. And then uh, it's uh, it's about uh, time uh, to pick a crew, but not before that. We uh, always check uh, our launch sequence and the stages always important to have a look to that if all your decouplers are in uh, the good uh, following order of, uh, of the flight and uh, of course some space tape uh, on the rocket is also uh, very uh, handy to keep it all, uh, all more stable uh, in flight. So crew now Say all hello to Jebediah, he's gonna be our pilot for this flight and we're gonna take uh, Bill and Bob as the uh, scientist and the engineer. Well up you go, hope you're ready. Welcome to the launch platform, so press Z, click the SAS assistant and press bar. And Thank you for the kickstart. We're throttling down now the liquid fuel engine half down and we're gonna rely on the, the boosters on the, on the way up. Oh gee, apparently I'm touching the G here as I want to uh, touch the D key to uh, start uh, leaning into the flight. So my gear came out and is now ret retracting back in. So now slowly I'm gonna lean into the east yeah, we're gonna do that uh, to be uh, as fuel efficient possible. We need to end up with a speed of uh, 2226 meters per second to reach orbit. And at that point we want to have it completely flat to be as uh, efficient uh, possible. Now this rocket has a lot of propellant, so uh, also, it's not the most symmetric uh, rocket due to the antenna on the capsule, uh, it's out of, of uh, synchronization. Stage separation any moment now. And there it is, and it's a beauty. We throttle up the engine back to 100%. We are now about uh, 50 kilometers high. Yeah, the uh, the atmospheric uh, edge of uh, of Kerbin is uh, about 70 kilometers, so 20 kilometers left to climb. 
and to gain uh, orbital speed. So for a moment there you saw me uh, checking uh, the map to see if I uh, have the right apple axis uh, made already and yes we did, we are far above the 70 kilometers so uh, I'm gonna put them flat now and we're gonna gain some speed to get it uh, in a nice orbit. Now the center first stage is uh, almost empty, it's time for separation and let, uh, we have a uh, kick in second stage engine. So now I'm gonna try uh, we are on uh, about uh, yeah, a height of uh, 100 kilometers and I think that's uh, very nice to create an orbit from there. We travel down and uh, we're gonna put uh, in an, uh, a Minerva node to uh, make the orbit uh, and uh, to make it uh, as uh, fuel efficient as possible. We want to gain speed so uh, we're gonna push the prograde and uh, speed up and you correct with the retrograde and if you uh, not uh, being as foolish as me you uh, don't forget to mark uh, the target node on uh, the left side of the navigation ball because uh, that's make sure that your uh, spaceship is aimed in the direction that you should be positioned to, uh, to end up in the orbit uh, that you just uh, tried to, to create with a maneuver node so yeah, that was stupid, but uh, nothing we can correct later. Yeah, we are approaching now uh, about the 2000 uh, km per second. If you look to the right of your uh, navigation ball, you can see uh, the levels of your burn dropping and exactly when it hits the floor, you need to press X to shut down your engine. And there you have it. The moment you hear this uh, soundtrack kicking in, that's the sign you officially uh, reach space. So uh, congrats, and uh, now we're almost uh, in an orbit as well, so uh, we're going to prepare to, uh, to shut down the engines. So you see our uh, orbit is almost lining up with our uh, maneuver node uh, orbit, so we are uh, going to prepare to shut down the engine and uh, we're gonna target uh, the moon and we're gonna try to set uh, a moon uh, trajectory with uh, the help of the maneuver nodes so uh, yeah you start uh, all, always with uh, speeding up because we have to go further than Kerbin so we have to extend our orbit from Kerbin all the way to the moon we're gonna do that with the prograde uh, marker and uh, we're gonna pull that out quite a lot and it's gonna cost you almost uh, a full uh, rocket stage to uh, to reach that and it's a little bit uh, a way of uh, looking around for uh, a nice path uh, to the moon and uh, a match up point and yeah, it's about playing with the prograde, retrograde. Uh, you can move your maneuver node uh, around the orbit uh, your vessel is in. So that gives you also uh, more opportunities uh, to uh, try to catch up uh, with and line up uh, perfect perfectly with, uh, with the moon. Well, I think I found here a well uh, trajectory to, uh, to the moon. So uh, let's start the burn. Don't forget to, uh, to set your uh, target uh, node. So, engine ignition and up to the moon. Well, this burn uh, will take a while. So uh, maybe I uh, can uh, use my time to explain why I'm a little bit late to this, uh, to this game. On the other side of uh, this channel, uh, we have uh, also a section uh, dedicated to Planet Coaster. And I was working uh, for four years on uh, on a theme park that's called uh, Walk on the Wild Side, especially late, uh, the latest edition took me about uh, 19 months to complete. It's the huge uh, center castle uh, that uh, I call Judgment Day. So if you have uh, time uh, and the guts to uh, be judged, uh, you definitely want to check that, uh, that one out. I have a full uh, on ride uh, available. That uh, project uh, yeah, took, uh, took a lot of time. In the meanwhile, we almost uh, reached our uh, perfect trajectory to the moon. So
so we're gonna stop now and uh, I'm gonna make some precision burns I'm gonna see uh, how we uh, end up uh, in uh, catching uh, the moon's trajectory uh. well this is looking quite uh, good so it seems we have found our perfect uh, trajectory to uh, to the moon so I'm gonna switch over now to uh, to the spacecraft uh, itself and have a look uh, oh there it is beautiful we have the moon there and it looks like we are uh, straight heading for it so now it's time to power up our uh, our spacecraft we have uh, put some solar panels on uh, uh, on the moon lander and uh, on the on the escape uh, capsule uh, that uh, needs to be returned to Kerbin and we're gonna power up this thing at this moment I just uh, realized I forgot to put uh, two Kerbins into the moon lander that's quite stupid because now we have to do very risky EVA in an orbit of the moon if you just uh, think about uh, the idea that uh, I just could have done that uh, already uh, before the launch to avoid this uh, kind of risky uh, transfers. After uh, the power up of the spacecraft I will uh, warp to uh, the point where the moon's gravitational uh, influence will uh, start uh, to uh, pull on uh, the spacecraft and uh, we're gonna prepare our maneuver node to circle the moon in a nice orbit. Almost uh, completed now the power up of our uh, spacecraft we extending uh, the long range antenna and under it there is uh, just another uh, hidden uh, sol solar panel so with that completed uh, we can load the batteries to create an orbit uh, around the moon so we give it a warp and there you have it we have now a blue line that is uh, giving us a uh, sight of uh, our approach to the moon Next thing is to uh, hit the brake very hard. We have to go uh, retrograde. We do that with a maneuver uh, node to make it easier. And we're gonna do a retrograde burn to uh, lose our speed and to be captured by the gravity of the moon. I'll try to keep the periapsis uh, about 10 kilometers uh, above the surface of, uh, of uh, the moon. Try any lower and you're risking uh, to uh, hit uh, or to slam into some mountains. Uh, below 10 kilometers I can't guarantee uh, you are safe. Above 10 kilometers uh, I really can guarantee you will not slam in to some mountains. So that's why I choose for the 10 kilometer uh, periaxis uh, height. Then we move to the periaxis uh, itself and there we set our second uh, Minerva node and we're gonna do the same with the with the upper axis uh, and try to get that to the 10 kilometers height as well so we have a perfect uh, perfect circular uh, orbit uh, around the moon we are close to the maneuver node now so uh, so I start uh, the engine burn the, the retrograde engine burn and we have to do that in two phases we have uh, one tank uh, still with some uh, fuel that has to be completed and then we can switch over to uh, the third uh, phase of uh, this rocket oh nice the this coupler is not functioning so let me try to yeah that's a little bit late but okay we're gonna fix that uh, with some uh, correction uh, burns but uh, yeah this is also a possibility in uh, Kerbal that uh, sometimes uh, the couplers are not uh, reacting on uh, on uh, your uh, comments uh, with the spacebar, and I especially notice that when you're in the map and uh, not uh, on the, on the flight uh, camera itself. Now I'm uh, doing some correction burns to uh, make sure we have a nice uh, altitude above uh, the moon uh, surface. Of course, we are uh, staying within the 10 kilometers uh, above uh, the surface. Uh, to avoid any collision with mountains. On the periapsis uh, I will do the same now to uh, get the apoaxis uh, also around uh, 60 kilometers in a circle uh, circle orbit around uh, the moon. 
Unfortunately, I was not paying a lot of attention to the maneuver node and I missed the burn spot to activate it. So we have to make some corrections to avoid slamming uh, into the moon uh, on, uh, on purposely. So I kind of uh, messed up it uh, somehow. I overshot uh, my burn and my uh, periopsis is uh, much too low now. So I have to correct that with a uh, prograde burn. Just to get the periapsis uh, back uh, above the 10 kilometers again uh, because this is too dangerous to ascend. So I am uh, now gonna start to turn uh, my vehicle into the prograde uh, position and gonna start some uh, correction uh, burns. And as you can see, with every burn, uh, small burn I make, you see the periapsis uh, coming up a little bit. So we uh, continue this till uh, the 10 uh, kilometers. And then uh, we're gonna do the uh, inevitable. We have to do the APA of two uh, Kerbal, uh, Kerbin astronauts to, uh, to the moon lander. It's gonna be Bill and Bob to leave the vehicle and uh, go EVA. They will... Uh, EVA to the uh, to the moon lander, and uh, as the scientist and engineer, they will uh, both land uh, on the moon. Jebediah is staying behind as the pilot, and will fly back from the moon's orbit back to uh, Kerbin. And to be honest, uh, I'm uh, building up skills at the moment still with uh, EVAs, especially with the steering. I lost uh, Bob and Bill about uh, three times, to be honest. Uh, I lost, uh, I slammed them into uh, a solar panel, and uh, so uh, to be honest, I'm uh, glad when uh, when I succeed to put uh, one or two Kerbals uh, in uh, in one uh, recording uh, safely into her uh, into their new seat. So the first is in. So now we are uh, completing the transfer of uh, Bill. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you all uh, to our channel. Just look uh, look further. We have a whole uh, planet coaster section, especially our uh, walk on the wild side uh, theme park. I have uh, created a lovely theme park with uh, all kinds of uh, attractions like uh, my best roller coaster, Predator. We have a dark ride called Judgment Day. Other coasters like Walk on the Wild Side, Bull the Dash and Iron Stomach. So I recommend you to uh, check that out also on our uh, channel if you like uh, some good planet coaster footage. Now with Bill knocking on the door of the moon lander and he's finally in as well, it's time to separate the moon lander from the command capsule. Jebediah is going to be leave behind in an orbit of the moon while Bob and Bill will uh, start their landing burn uh, to find a nice spot to land on the moon. Moon descent time. So we're gonna hit the brake. We're gonna start our ascent to the moon. And there was Jebediah here flying by. <laughs> that went very fast and close. <laughs> So we're gonna start uh, our um, our moon landing uh, burn. We're gonna take uh, all the speed down to about uh, si 60, and then we start with some uh, precision uh, burns to get all the sideways speed out of it. Try to get it on on the nil uh, meters per second, and then uh, slowly and gradually uh, dropping down or more falling down to the to the moon uh, surface. A landing uh, on the surface of the moon is uh, not that uh, very difficult. Just keep uh, keep your eyes on uh, on uh, your uh, on your downwards uh, speed. Make sure there is no uh, sideways movement, otherwise uh, you're definitely gonna tumble over by uh, by the landing. So my trick is to uh, to just let it uh, fall down to the surface. And keep your eyes on uh, on the speed, and keep it, uh, if possible, below uh, the 100 meters uh, per second. And as soon uh, when you're going uh, lower than uh, than one kilometer height, 
that's the point uh, I will start to uh, to make sure I will not uh, exceed uh, the 25 uh, meters per second uh, velocity otherwise uh, it's gonna be hard uh, to break in time just be very careful with uh, with your burns don't burn too fast or too too much otherwise you're going uh, back up and do not uh, wait too long to uh, slow yourself down or uh, the surface of the moon will be there uh, much sooner than uh, you expected So we exceeded uh, the 100 meters per second uh, speed uh, limit. So I have a small burn now, just to get it under, uh, under it. And then about uh, 1200 meters I will uh, start a larger burn and again gonna put it to nil meters per second just to make sure all sideways movement is out of the vehicle. So we are sure we are not gonna tumble over and gracefully we let it fall again let it picking up some uh, speed, not too much. Eventually the landing speed uh, should be uh, below the 10 meters per second. Otherwise you are landing gear can, uh, can have trouble to uh, cope with, uh, with the forces of the landing. Yeah, great. On the left side uh, you can see uh, we're picking up some uh, shadows of our vehicle. So we are now uh, seriously coming close to, uh, to a landing. So let's see if we can make it uh, a nice soft touchdown. And okay, we're down. Quite uh, bumpy, but 7 uh, meters per second uh, is not that bad. Now we have landed uh, the moon lander and now transformed to uh, our first uh, moon station. It's uh, time to have it powered up. So before EVA we have to extend the solar arrays as we uh, can load uh, our batteries. If we have both uh, kerbals outside uh, no one will be able to push the buttons. With the ship now prepped up we can go EVA. We take out uh, Bob first via the ceiling hatch as I found uh, that something is blocking uh, the side hatch door so we have to figure out what uh, what happened there on the construction just turn on uh, the uh, RCS and the thrust packs will be uh, activated with the controls uh, A, S, D, W, shift and control you can maneuver your kerbal With Bill now joining the EVA uh, as well, it's uh, time to plant the flag. So now it's uh, official. It's the first landing spot on the moon for uh, Bob and Bill. And uh, the start of a full new Alpha moon base. How exciting. And uh, after this uh, it's uh, time to uh, take uh, Bob and Bill back into uh, their new base for a good period of rest so they are uh, as fit as possible to start some uh, exploration. As we uh, now are tugging in uh, Bob and Bill in their uh, new uh, moon base uh, beds, it's uh, now uh, time to uh, check over with uh, another uh, space hero, 
who we left uh, in uh, in a moon orbit. So uh, we're gonna switch over to Jebedai, and uh, it's time to bring him uh, safely to Kerbal. Oh, and look at him smiling and enjoying the view of screaming over the moon surface with just 9 kilometers under him. Wow, Kerbal in his rear mirror. I would be smiling myself to be honest. Let's bring him home. Well, I will create a new uh, Minervian node and speed up my velocity uh, as I want to create a uh, higher uh, orbit over the moon. Uh, you just take the prograde mark and stretch it slowly until you get a purple circle around Kerbin. Uh, this circle will, uh, uh, is the uh, gravitational uh, orbit uh, Kerbin will lock you in uh, when you make uh, this burn. And from that point uh, we will create a new Minerva node with more direct, uh, with a more direct approach to Corbin. This is about uh, the best I could uh, get it around Kerbal. So let's uh, execute uh, the burn that will make uh, the jump to the new orbit. You see uh, the purple uh, circle became yellow and that means uh, this will be uh, or orbit around Kerbal. As you see we are getting more distance uh, from the moon and uh, Kerbal is uh, closing in. Here a great shot from our capsule uh, transpassing uh, the star of Kerbal. I make the final uh, approach uh, maneuver node to Kerbin, somewhere a little bit over the Paroxys. Uh, I will put uh, the retrograde marker to get its uh, apoaxis uh, within about 40 kilometers above the surface, so the atmosphere will slow uh, you down enough so landing uh, is immediate. With this last burn executed, it's uh, the last maneuver we have to make to uh, to get our uh, Jabadaya safely back uh, to Kerbal. So as we don't have any uh, any fuel needed, we are uh, going to uh, decouple our uh, service module. So uh, it's time to say goodbye. Yes, you served Jebediah very well. And in uh, the process, don't forget uh, to aim your capsule uh, retrograde, as you would uh, burn up in uh, any other posi uh, position, trying to uh, enter uh, Kerbal's uh, atmosphere. So, uh, so don't forget about that. Kerbal's uh, atmosphere is starting at uh, 70 uh, kilometers uh, at it, uh, altitude. And that is uh, where uh, we uh, are about now. So we should see the heat shield uh, starting to glow up uh, any uh, moment now. Remember just keep uh, the capsule uh, retrograde and you will be uh, just fine. The heat shield is taking uh, some friction now and uh, we can see uh, some plasma building uh, up around uh, the capsule. Mm. 
And here, Luke Jebediah is uh, now uh, just one uh, happy, uh, smiling uh, fireball. We now reached uh, the end of uh, the re entering phase. Uh, plasma is uh, less dense now, and our speed is uh, now under uh, 1000 meters per second. Oh yeah, another uh, important thing is uh, to switch uh, your, your altitude meter to land settings to avoid you slam into the, uh, to the soil uh, earlier than expected. And believe me, uh, <laughs> it happened uh, to me. Last thing I do to uh, give a smoother landing is uh, release uh, the heat shield uh, to lower the weight and so the impact velocity by uh, touchdown. Uh, the moment the parachutes will open up, the heat shield uh, will uh, fall off uh, the capsule. First uh, I'm opening the drag shield. I did it uh, quite early as uh, it will uh, start taking uh, drag at about uh, 2500 meters above the ground. And there goes the main shoot to early as well. The track shield is uh, unfolding and uh, there goes uh, the heat shield as expected. Well, the boom uh, was uh, the heat shield uh, impact. The main chute uh, unfolded also, so uh, now it's just waiting uh, for uh, for a touchdown. Leaves me with uh, thanking you for uh, watching my first uh, Kerbal uh, video uh, all the way through. Um, yeah, please like, uh, subscribe, or leave a comment on uh, on Supernova Productions, and uh, hope to have uh, you back here soon. Have a great day.